Hey guys, this is Telef. So, I get asked a lot, how do you join phonography? If you read the guild page, the main requirement is not to suck. To not suck. But nobody seems to understand what that means. People say, hey, I'm good at blank, I'm good at striker, I'm good at geese, and you'll be rejected. And it's not because you're playing striker or geese, but it's because you're missing the main point what is actually important about the game, and that's no one class. In a word, it's game sense. And that is an enormous, enormous topic. It's, it's everything. Game sense is everything. And it's also the least common thing found in the game. If you have game sense, you can play any class in the game. You can pick it up not knowing anything about it, and you will be above average. Game sense is is knowing everything there is to know about the game. It's knowing how delay works. It's understanding the concept. It's knowing how to use it in every situation. It's picking up DK and realizing after one try you cannot actually delay grab consistently with Holy Bless. That's what game sense is. It's not doing that and then trying it again and again and again before you realize it. You pick it up, you use it, you analyze all of its abilities, and you realize, no, I cannot delay grab with this. So then you look at other D parts of DK. Well, it's got this nice long one bar. That's good for survivability. It's probably not going to do much damage, you can see, because it has many hits. And you understand that how counter functions in the game. So you're aware that you're not going to be able to do damage with this. So you cannot rely on either one bar for damage. So then you go look at the two bars. Now you're getting somewhere. These two bars are much better. You've got the flipping thingy. I don't know the names. You'll know what I'm talking about the flipping thingy. A lot of hits again, but each hit is a lot of damage and it leaves you very immobile. Plus the last hit is a uh, grab. So this is the kind of thing you want to use if you know that your opponent has no MP or immediately after they special especially because they'll be flat footed. And then you've got um, Spell of Ruin is the name of it I think. This one has more range and it a lot of hits again. More hits than the other one. Less damage per hit. But you can see that this is a good spell to use if they're against the wall. So you're analyzing each special and its strengths and weaknesses and when you're going to want to use it. Now because both of those two bars have hits, again, this is not going to be your main source of damage. This is going to be your finisher. Or something close to that. I mean, finisher is a bit of a loose term here because HP can come and go just like that. So where is your damage going to come from on a DK? So you're going to look at your regular attacks. Well, you see that you have this combo which launches if you do a critical attack and that you can do even if you don't connect with your opponent. See now you're getting now you're getting somewhere. Now you're gonna finding out where you're gonna deal your damage. So if your opponent you can if your opponent's a rush type, if your opponent likes to run at you a bunch, well now you see you have this attack which you can start before they get there. So they could run into it and you could launch them and grab them or do whatever it is you want to do. So there's one one tool you can add to your attack box. I don't know where I was going with that. So what else have you got? Well you've got this dash attack. This dash attack has actually pretty good range. You see that you can slip above, you can hit above platforms with a lot of it. And it also knocks down. So you know that say for example if you're on the left side of Elven in the middle platform and someone's on the center highest platform you can dash attack up and it will hit them just above the platform, they will slide off and fall to the, all the way down to the bottom, giving you plenty of opportunity to use that to your advantage. So you see you've got some range on this. You also see that it hits twice. The second attack will launch if they're standing still. So now you also have a rush attack of your own. If someone's flat footed, doing whatever, charging rage or MP or they just finished a special, you can dash up to them and attack twice and then grab them or something after that. So you're seeing, you're analyzing bit by bit, blow by blow, the usefulness of each attack. So dash attacks are one thing, but what about the rest of it? Well you've got a dive. You've got your dive, which is probably the part everybody knows about and cares about. So this dive is quick, it does a good amount of damage, it launches occasionally depending on what the person's doing at the time, and it also will hit two or three times, so they'll be immobile during that. So it's a good way to bomb down on people, and it's a good way to chase people if they're fleeing from you. So 
so this is so this is what you know now. You can't rely on your specials for damage. They're for hitting your opponents after they've made a mistake. So the best thing you can do now is try to make your opponent make a mistake. This is what you've learned. That if you want to get these good easy kills with your specials, you have to make your opponent make mistakes. And you have the tools to do that. You have a dive that's quick. It's fast. And it's something that your opponent's probably going to be expecting because it's like the main part of DK. So they're expecting you to dive. So dive. Dive somewhere else. Dive away from them. Dive towards them, but, you know, to the left or something like that. Make them think you're going to dive at them. And then dive away from them or don't dive at all. Or cancel your dive with something else. The goal is to make them wary of your dive. They want You want to make them special. You want them to try to, to think they're prepared for something you're not going to do. You know, you want to hit them with a dash attack because they may not be aware that the dash attack hits above the platform. And then they'll be wary of that too. So between those two attacks, your strongest, your biggest advantage is attacking diagonally up and diagonally down. That's where you're going to have something the opponent is not. Attacking diagonally down, you've got this dive. Attacking diagonally up, you've got the dash attack. And then you've also got your aerial attack, which has pretty decent range, also allows for an easy auto, which means you're going to want to use those platforms to your advantage, because you've got an auto. So the goal, I mean, this is one play style of DK. You can play it any way you want, and I would encourage you to play it a way differently than what I'm saying, just because this is generally the normal way of playing DK, is an emphasis on dive and making your opponent special. And you can make them, you can afford to make them special, is a uh, part I left out. You can afford to make them special because of your specials, because you have a one bar that lasts a good deal of time, and it's probably going to last longer than your opponent's special. So you may get some hits in that way. So you can see how, through game sense alone and no experience, I'm not a DK player. I just picked this all up off the top of my head. I'm not even playing Grand Chase right now. I haven't played Grand Chase in the last few hours. This is just something I can visualize in my head because I have an understanding of the game. So I just built an entire playstyle for DK off of my game sense alone. That's the kind of thing we want. Someone with game sense can play off the top of my head Knight, Savior, AR, Asura, Shisha, uh, everything on Sieg, most of Amy. They can play Xeno, they can play Viking, they can play a lot of Mary. I, I can't even think of them all off the top of my head. Classes that aren't specialized. Savior, Osterda, AR, all classes that I always say everyone can play, because everyone with game sense can play them. There's nothing complicated about them, they are very straightforward, and they're very specific in their talents. Osterda rolls. Osterda hits you with a stick as he rolls. Savior grabs, because it's got the short grab, you can do all sorts of stuff with it and AR sh does this auto thing and you run with it a lot you know it's all really easy really simple if you can step you can play them even if you can't step you can probably play them game sense applies to most classes game sense you're going beyond game sense when you pick up something like DA DA is its own thing game sense barely applies to DA because DA with its hummer removes itself from the regular rules of play it is on its own level a, it's a completely different game to fight a knight and then to fight a DA, and I'm sure you can understand, you can relate to that. It's a completely different game to fight a PK than to fight a knight, because a PK is doing the same thing. It's using its dashes, the JF dashes, to avoid taking damage. That's different. Uh, an archer or a nova player is not getting regular game sense. Those are incredibly unique play styles that require an extreme amount of skill and practice to play. And you pretty much have to formulate your own play style on all those. Um, the same is true for something like Thief. Or... What's something else? What's something else? Well, you get the picture. Game sense is, is what's important. But even when you take a class like DA, you're still applying game sense to it. Because another major part of game sense is knowing who you're fighting and what they're capable of. If you see someone who is using Xenocider and is using Magna Stan's Transformation Aura as a basis, like I like to do, you need to understand the implications of that and what it means for you as the DA. You understand that, they one, they use it in an attempt to bait you. 
they want you to come close and attack because you always think the aura is gone and it never is. And then you get launched fairly high and the Mango Stan can usually damage you or grab you by, the, by that time. Plus it heals the Dan. Or it heals the Xenocider player. And I'm just using my own playstyle as Xenocider right now as an example. But I never stay Dan. Almost never. It depends on who I'm fighting. But I would not stay Dan against a DA probably. I would probably prefer, I don't know, I might stay to Dan against the DA, it depends on who I'm fighting and how good they are at fighting a Dan. Because you've got the range, but it's also an extremely clunky class, and it's big, it's easy to hit. And it's very susceptible to a DA 2 bar. So as the DA, you need to understand that you cannot attack some them when they're using Dan. And when I play Dan, I, almost, I use almost no other specials. That's all my MP. So you can expect that. Um, if you see me switch to... If I'm playing DA, I'm probably going to be using the the connected pikes. I don't know what they're called. Because it's easier to knock down with and I get more damage from a dash attack. Um, so if you see me switch to the double version where I can step, that means I'm probably going to be try to step into you for a Dan transformation. So you understand that and you're going to prepare yourself for it. You're going to prepare by starting your one bar early. And that's the main thing most DAs don't understand, because they have no game sense, they think they should still be spamming this now, not useless, but pretty bad one bar. That one bar absolutely has its use, but you need a lot of game sense to use it properly, and in general, game sense is going to tell you, don't use it. It's for spawn killing and, and panic moments only. You're not going to use it very much, unless you have a very good idea of what's going on. So, you know, maybe you'll start your one bar early and try to hit me out of the delay, or you'll just do it to get your attack boost, and then wait for me to transform, and then wait for me to move out of my transformation aura, and then attack. You know, it gets a bit much. It's very difficult to pull out a specific example while I do this, but I hope you can understand what I'm saying. This game sense is not exclusive to any one class. Being good at one class, almost exclu if you're only good at one class, you're not. you're talking to the wrong people, you're talking to the wrong guild. Everyone in the guild, everyone in pornography can play lots of things. And they can play them without ever having played b them before. Especially classes like Savior, AR, or Asura. I mean, with the exception of Mike. Mike plays as Asura on a different level than most of us do. But it's just a simple, straightforward class that we can play because we have our game sense. Because we understand delay, we understand counter, we count each other's MP, we pay attention to what, who knows what, and we understand what our opponents are capable of. This is what you need to be in pornography, and this is what you need to be a true top player. If you're a flavor of the month striker geese player, and you're only playing it because it's the only class you can get kills with, or something along those lines, you're not going to go anywhere. If you're a Rama or a PK player, play something else please, because you're hurting yourself by only playing those classes. And I mean you're actually ruining your own playstyle, because you are not forced to deal with the consequences of your actions. You know, if you try the same crap you try with PK, with Knight, with something that specials don't last a millennium, and actually have very crappy invincibility frames, and you're just going to get killed if you try it, you're not going to improve. So go play Knight, figure out the restrictions that most classes have to deal with. So improving your game sense, like I just said, go play Knight. Um, Knight will teach you how to use, how to get so much out of so little. It'll teach you how to get an entire playstyle out of only a few moves, just like I did with Dragon Knight. And I mean, I can do all that, and I can use it. And so can JRT. I'm sure most of you saw the video of him beating Sobron's DA. It's just game sense that allowed him to do that. It's not like he practices DK. As a matter of fact, I would be surprised if he ever really touched it before. Um, go play Arme. Go play Mage, specifically. Mage teaches you how to plan ahead. Not far ahead, but in far enough ahead that you won't be dashing into enemies. It'll teach you how to use your invincibility properly, and it will teach you discretion when it comes to using your specials. Mage has six specials. There, are Five of them are useful in all situations. Or not all situations. Five of them are useful, and each in its own specific situation. So you want to learn when to use those. Um, it teaches you how to use, you know, you're going to use your fireballs to try to trap, to kind of box out your opponent, that's the word I was looking for, box out your opponent and manipulate them into certain courses of action. Um, play Thief. Thief teaches you everything there is to know about delay. What better to teach you about a delay than a class that relies entirely upon it? Thief was my first main, Thief was JRT's first main, Thief was Sora's first main. 
those were our classes. I mean, that's what we played at the time, and before, you know, we got hit by Jins and Strikers and DA and whatever, it was one of the best classes to play, because Delay was such a, an infallible game sense concept. So, go play those classes, and above all, above all of those three classes, play every class in the game. If you know what your opponent is capable of, and I don't mean know of them, but truly understand what your opponent is capable of and the implications of that, you will become an enormously better player. That alone will boost your skill level an astronomical amount. And I really encourage, I really want to see diversity in PvP. I want to, I fought a Xenocider the other day. He wasn't bad, he was actually pretty good. And it was more fun than I had. I fought only one Viet's mage and it was sick. A sick mage player crazy I think he beat my SK like four times and I only got a couple wins out there I want to see that I want to see more stuff like that and I guarantee you if only one Viet were to pick up anything else he would be much better than sorry but most of you would be so really go out there and play different classes play something you never play before except for AP don't do that never play AP AP is bad for your soul all right you can play AP but don't play AP competitively and don't expect it to contribute that much to your game sense abilities. But really, go out there and pick up a class you've never played before. Pick up a class you suck with and just lose 20 times in a row with it. It will make you a much better player. So uh, that's all I've got for now.